When calculating the cell potential of an electrochemical cell, it depends if it's voltaic or electrolytic as to whether that voltage is positive or negative. And what those positive and negatives mean, it's not the same thing as a positive and negative on a number line. What they mean is positive being that energy is provided and negative being that energy is required. Now these are potential energies, electric potential and chemical potential energy. And in a voltaic cell, we're converting the uh, chemical potential energy into electric. And in an electrolytic cell, we need electric energy to force those electrons to transfer because the, water hill is, uh, the waterfall is uphill in a non-spontaneous reaction. So if you're calculating the voltage either provided by that electrochemical cell or required by the electrochemical cell, there are sort of three types of questions you're going to see. Well, two types of questions you're going to see, but we're going to talk about them in three things. So the first method is just a quick, easy, like my a student showed me this once and it was like, I was like, oh my gosh, that makes it so much easier for everyone that can access the mark. So the first method is we're going to go top minus bottom and we're going to get our answer. So for example, if this was an iodine cobalt electrolytic cell, so something like this, we had plat plutonium and that has some I2 and some I minus, sulfridge, cobalt 2 plus and a cobalt stick, for example, right? And you are putting your finger and you're finding your strongest, etc, etc. So if this is the case, then we have sort of this, an I2 and cobalt is going to be our strongest reducing a oxidizing agent, strongest oxidizing agent, and this will be our strongest reducing agent. Now, I just copied out a little bit of our data booklet so that we don't have to look at the whole thing, but uh, these are just ones that I will use from your data booklet. So we can say, okay, these are the two things that I'm using in my cell that are in my question. I'm gonna take the top number and I'm gonna subtract that from the bottom number as if I was in elementary school. And the answer is gonna be 0. Uh, 0.54 minus negative 0. 0.8, or just, I mean 28, and I'm gonna get 0. 0.82 volts. Top minus bottom, top minus bottom answer. And then I'd say, oh, that's a voltaic cell, it's spontaneous, so it's positive 0.82 volts, okay? If it was a different kind of question, but similar species, and this question asked me for, uh, I had a cobalt 2 plus and I had an I minus as my strongest reducing agent and my strongest oxidizing agent. So a whole new question where I don't have I2, and this is my strongest, and I don't have cobalt, and this is my strongest. Now I can see that this is gonna be uh, requiring energy to happen, and I can still go top minus bottom. My answer will still be 0.82 volts, but this time I know it's an electrolytic cell, so it's gonna be negative 0.82 volts. So that's super easy because I can just uh, look in my data booklet, find those two half reactions, and take the numbers and subtract them. So that's method one. Method two is actually the same thing, and it's this formula. The E of the cell is equal to the E of the reduction. So that's what these are. These are all our e, uh, voltages of the reduction half reactions, right? These are all gaining electrons half reactions. So that makes this the reduction potential. And so it's taking your reduction potentials from your cathode and subtracting that from the anode's reduction potential, and that will give you the voltage of the cell. So for example, in this case, let's keep this example happening, that that was my strongest reducing agent, that was my strongest oxidizing agent, that this would then be losing electrons oxidation at the anode, and this would be gaining electrons reduction at the cathode. If this was the case, then I would go over here to this formula, and I would say equals my cathode's reduction potential is negative 0 0.28 minus the anode's reduction potential is 0 0.54. And guess what I'm going to get? My calculator is going to tell me it's negative 0.82 volts. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So it's the same, negative 0.82 volts. So I'm going to write it a little bit darker here. Hold on a minute. Let me get a better marker. Negative 0.82 volts. Okay. So, but for this to work out, I have to actually figure out which is my cathode, figure out which is my anode, and then I can plug it into the formula. So it's just one more step to access, which is why I quite like this top minus bottom shortcut. 
Uh, whereas this, you have to actually figure out which is your cathode and figure out which is your anode. So let's do another example here of the method two. Let's say we did um, a, a cell which had this hydrogen in here. We'll use the hydrogen this time and cobalt. Okay, we had a hydrogen cobalt cell. It was the H2 was my strongest oxidizing agent and my cobalt is my strongest reducing agent. When I put my finger, I found my strongest. And then I would go over here and I would say, oh, that this is losing electrons, oxidation of the anode. This is gaining electrons, reduction of the cathode. Remember, all of these are always GERC. All of these in this column are always LIOA. So I would go over here and I would plug in that the E cell is going to be 0, 0.00 for the cathode minus negative 0 0.28 volts for the anode. And so my answer would be positive 0.28 volts showing me that it must be spontaneous. It must be a voltaic cell. The waterfall also tells me it's spontaneous. It's a waterfall, a uh, downward waterfall. So method two and method one are actually the same thing because if I went top minus bottom for this example, I would still get positive 0.8 volts. I would get 0.28 volts on my calculator and then I look down on waterfall so it's positive. So the, the method one and method two are the same thing. It's just when you have to figure out which is your cathode first before you plug it in. Okay. So then those are the easy. But for mastery questions, they're going to ask you for a reaction that's not in the data booklet. So I can't do top minus bottom or it's not just as easy as a plug and play. Um, and maybe they give me the cell and then they ask me, what about the one that's in the data booklet? That's not in the data booklet, I mean. And I'm going to give you the one that's in the data booklet. So a brand new hack reaction you've never seen where this is the answer here, I don't know, positive 0.44 volts, and it asks you what is the reduction potential of the cathode, right? So something like that. That'd be a little harder. Um, they might ask you for the cell potential, the oxidation half reaction. So if that's the case, you would just do exactly what you're doing here, but then flippy, flippy, switchy, switchy. So if this is the reduction potential for I2 to I minus, then the oxidation potential, the oxidation potential would be the reverse of this, so this would be negative of that. So that also, that's bringing in sort of two outcomes at the same time. Do you understand oxidation reduction and you understand cell potential? So that would also make that a mastery question. And then these ones, these ones are like, we're gonna go slow for these, okay. So let me just get some stuff cleared off for you first. Sometimes they ask us questions about changing the reference cell. These ones are not as straightforward, so um, here we go. So the other ones are easy. Treat them as easy, make it easy, don't make it any harder than it is, top minus bottom, done, done. Or cathode minus anode, done, done. Okay, don't think they're hard, those ones are not hard. This one, you gotta think about. So the reference cell. Now, once upon a time ago, a million years ago, uh, some scientists put the hydrogen and H plus situation, the pluses are a bit out there, uh, H plus con thing, container, and hooked it up to, let's say, the cobalt, cobalt two plus. And the voltmeter said that it was negative, or it was 0.28 volts. And so they put on the data booklet 0.28 because they called the hydrogen zero. So this is like ground zero, right? And everything I'm measuring from ground zero is either below 0 0.28 meters in the ground, a hole in the ground, for example, or above like 0 0.54 meters above the ground. And the difference between them is what the voltage cell potential is. So top minus bottom, right? 0.54 meters minus this 0 0.28 meters because I'm in the hole is the same thing as top minus bottom and I get that they are you know the difference between them the, the the total height there so that's what this is doing but that's because somebody decided that hydrogen was going to be zero volts well what if we decided that the iodine was going to be zero volts so what if we decided that this was going to be zero what would we need to call this now well, if the difference in the pink was, let's see, what was the difference in the pink? So the difference in the pink was 0.54, I should have it up there, oh, there it is, 0 0.82 meters, right? If this is a tree and this is, a, this is where the ground level is and this is a hole in the ground, if I'm standing in the hole, the tree is then 0.82 meters above my head, right? 
So if I all of a sudden say the top of the tree is now zero, how, what is the height of the hole? Well, the hole is gonna have to be negative 0.82 meters. If I'm calling this zero, then this now has to be changed to be negative 0.82. That's what this changing reference cell means. It's saying, hey, we used to say that hydrogen was zero, but what if we changed it so that the reference half cell was now the I2 I minus? So if this is then changed to 0, 0, 0.00 volts, how would that change the cobalt 2 plus cobalt? So it's like I'm making a new data booklet. My, my original data booklet has the hydrogen at 0. What if I want to rewrite my data booklet and I want I2 to be 0? What number would I have to put beside the cobalt? So to figure these out, I mean, it's kind of a little bit nicer to talk about them in terms of the heights of a tree and the hole on the ground. But uh, what you basically did to solve for this is you said, okay, well, if this, is, if I had to make this zero, I had to subtract 0.54 in order to get it to be zero. So I also have to subtract 0.54 from this as well. And so negative 0.28 minus 0.54 is gonna be negative 0.82 meters, exactly like we thought it should be over here with the hole in the ground. And so my new data booklet would have to have that written beside the cobalt, cobalt 2 plus. Well, what would the hydrogen then be? The hydrogen would be, well, I'd have to subtract 0.54 volts. And so the hydrogen in my new data booklet would be 0 0.54 volts. However, the battery would still be the same, right? If I took an I2 and cobalt battery, top minus bottom equals negative 0.82, or I mean positive, sorry, my calculator would say 0.82 volts on it. I can see it's voltaic, so I would say positive. So I just did top minus bottom for the battery. That's an I2 cobalt battery, right? Top minus bottom answer. So this battery would have that voltage, whether I'm using that old data booklet or the new data booklet. Let's have a look at this new data booklet. Let me take this away so we can just have a little clearer look here. Top minus bottom 0 0.82 on my calculator, not meters, pardon me, volts, and it's spontaneous, so positive. The voltage of the battery will be the same, right? I mean, my calculator battery that provides 1.5 volts, whether I use this data booklet or that data booklet, the calculator battery doesn't change its voltage just because I'm using a different data booklet. That doesn't work, right? Because the waterfall height is still the same, whether I use this data booklet or this data booklet or this data booklet. The distance between the height of the tree and that hole in the ground that I just rubbed off the board is the same, whether I call the ground zero or the top of the tree zero or the bottom of the hole zero. It doesn't matter. The distance between them is the same. So if I change my reference half cell, but I ask you, what is the voltage of the battery? I can just use my old data booklet. I don't have to change everything and then subtract them. You can if you want, but you're going to get the same answer. However, if I say, hey, I'm changing this reference half cell, what would my new half cell be for my new data booklet? I wouldn't ask you for the new data booklet. I would just say, what is the half potential? What is the reduction potential for the cobalt 2 plus cobalt? And I would have to take top minus bottom. Uh, uh, pardon me. I would have to figure out how do I change this to zero, and I have to do the same thing to zero. Okay. So I know I deviated from your note package on that one because um, I just felt like this was going to be more helpful. And so maybe it'd be wise to go to your note package now and copy up those answers on those notes. Do some of those questions. Go back in your outcome G and H, and uh, on the voltaic cells and electrolytic cells, and start calculating those voltages. Uh, and play with your um, cell potential calculations, whether it's top minus bottom, whether it's cathode minus anode, or whether it's changing the reference half cell.